feel the passion. I can legit feel the the luxury passion coming from you. And I want I want us to talk now a little bit about the smaller developments that offer these luxurious um, services and and even um, opportunities for people, uh, for younger people, for middle class people who to move into lifestyle estates even that provide some of these things that become communal. You know. Um, are you seeing a rise of this happening in terms of um, luxury being broken down into smaller, more affordable um, um, compartments for, for, for the market to say um, this is a luxury apartment, it's a two-bedroom apartment, it's a studio apartment? Um, what is happening in terms of that in the, in the, in the market currently? You are definitely going to have fun if you are, if you are a property uh, avid um, in, or have interest in property. You are absolutely going to have fun on this podcast. So tonight I'm talking to Nasreen Musa, who is the Managing Director at Legendary Investment Properties. We're going to be talking about the evolution of luxury property, um, uh, the luxury property market in South Africa and what lies ahead. Nasreen, good evening and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Tumo. It's lovely to be here today. Thank you so much. Um, you know, we are we're talking luxury property, and when I think my dream home, it's definitely in the luxury property market. Uh, maybe in a couple of years, but it's 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 one of those things that everyone wants to know and um, know about, so that as they are planning their future, as they are looking at these um, these these properties, they know how to go into the market and how to potentially um, invest in it. So let's talk luxury property market how do we measure it how do we know that this 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 particular property is in the luxury property market or is in the normal mainstream market how do we differentiate legendary investments we believe that luxury is subjective it's a matter of opinion so imagine walking into a spa like bathroom or even a dressing room that's as big as a shop and makes you feel so loved it's like a designer room um shopping a shopping room or imagine sitting in the hot tubs enjoying the stars at night enjoying a glass of champagne with friends around a fire pit that for us is luxury um at legendary investments we believe in curating a lifestyle that you desire that brings you opulence and international standards and that we don't see here in south africa and for us bringing new things that are luxurious that we haven't got here is what legendary investments is all about we Not bring you uh, we bring you mm -hmm. the um, experience of investing and enjoying that investment. Nice. And, um, but particularly looking at um, these properties, are, are this is it something that you, you can quantify according to price because i like the fact that you said lux, luxury is subjective you know but um when we are talking benchmarking and we are talking um specifics is there a price tag that's uh, that's attached to luxury to say um the market begins at 17 million for example or at at 15 million well it would depend where it is i mean mm -hmm. if you're talking cat bay yes definitely if you're talking upper claremont I mean, yeah, the prices are really expensive down here because it's the price of land. But if you're talking the middle class suburbs, no, you're not talking that expensive. You're talking about five million. You're talking about seven million. Um, you're talking about ten million. No, definitely. And um, you you already mentioned um, something there that that are, that triggers my next question to say, um, is it based on location? Is luxury based on location? Um, when we are looking at how the market has been performing, um, people think um, location is, is important and we believe location is important in the property industry. Um, is, is the location of luxury property important or um, can you just look at it in terms of um, wherever the property is, you can upscale it and maybe renovate it to make it a luxury property? Absolutely not. Location is not important. Mm -hmm. um, 
you can be have the most expensive location like in Camps Bay, but you could have a home mm. that is run down. Yeah. But you can have a home that's in the suburbs or in you know one of they the outer them. areas. Yeah. But it's actually luxurious. It just means that it increases the price as it goes on. Whatever you do to your home increases the price. Um, so we don't believe location you know, plays a part in luxury. Mm. No, I, I actually, I love that because um, one of the other questions that I had was, was you turning a home into a, luxury, a luxurious apartment or a luxurious property? So um, from, from what you just said now, I'm, I'm seeing that it's possible, you know, that uh, whoever you are, wherever you are, because one of those pertinent questions was, um, can you change a... Um, a township um, property, uh, even inner city um, property, and turn it into luxury. And from what you've been saying in terms of it's about the features of the home and not necessarily um, its location or the price, it's the features that that, that make um, the property luxury because it, it, it plays with the valuation of the property and what you have done to it that really just extend it. So let's talk a bit on the trends that you guys have seen over the past 10 or uh, over the past five to 10 years that have happened in this space. What are the, the, the pertinent um, trends that you guys are seeing that are upcoming that are, are notable to say um, in the luxury uh, target market or even in the markets, this is what is currently happening? Well, we're seeing more people are investing in luxury property in the US it's gone from 10% to 36%. And within a month later, it went to 55%. In the UK, the stats have gone up. It's increased to about, by about 59%. 9% of that is the countryside, where people just want their kids to run around, enjoy the greenery, have a home office, as well as spend time with their kids at the same time. Mm. Um, so, and... And they have had 237 deals mm. during COVID alone for homes over £5 million. Pounds. And that's what we're talking in the UK. Mm. In South Africa, we're seeing 80% of us being South African, buying into, you know, living here and 20% non-foreigners. Mm. But because of the luxury market here, which is slowly starting to rise, um, we're seeing it go from 80 to 60% South Africans and 40% non-South African residents. And does it depend on the style of the house? Because you know people have different styles. And um, as you said, luxury is very subjective. Does it is it dependent on the styles of, of um, the individual? Because some people will go um, like... Um, extreme Tuscan or some people will go um, very modern in terms of adding very technological um, improvements to their home, you know, um, does it, that it's, is it dependent on the style as well? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. It absolutely does. Please um, talk us it some also, of those things. If, if a home looks Tuscan on the outside, you don't want to walk in and see a home that looks absolutely modern on the inside. Mm -hmm. You want to see it still bring about the features from um, the Tuscan era. Um, if a house looks, you know, Victorian on the outside, you want to still have certain features that bring in the Victorian elements into it or if it has this Parisian look you know you want to walk into the house it still has a farm style kitchen that's Parisian you know you want to see all the different things that showcase so the outside should showcase the inside definitely yeah no um i see i think i think we, we had um, a poll just not too long ago on the podcast and we were asking people what kind of house um they would like and i think we were talking building and most people were like oh i really would like the tuscan or i would like the i would like the modern and um from what you were saying it really shows that you know taking out that a little bit of effort you know in in putting those features in the house will also really um ups the ante when it comes to looking at your house and i want us to really now talk about valuations in terms of how 
how this changes your value and um, how how also investors can use this as as an investment strategy. So when we are looking at values of house and of properties and homes, um, how do we how do we ensure that um, we in, we we do improvements to the homes that will increase the value? What are some of those things that we can do? You can do absolutely anything to your home to increase value. Mm. But the most important thing is yeah. maintaining your home. Because if you don't maintain your home, you can you can decrease the value of your home. Um, having a very good architect and interior designer can help you in a lot of ways because they would be able to come in and help you create a lot of different trends to kind of bring it through through the house actually mm. um so yeah those are two people to actually look into i have a very good team behind me mm. an architect who helps me a lot and i've got an interior decorator that helps me a lot and some of it just comes from my very own style so mm. what you like is what you should put in your home because sometimes we find ourselves very uncertain about the things we add into our homes. Mm. But the simplest things as doing something as a kitchen, it does a lot to the house. Yeah. If you just joined us, we are talking the evolution of luxury prop of the of the luxury property market in South Africa and where it's possibly headed in the near future. And I'm sitting with Nazreen Musa, who's the managing director at Legendary Investment Properties. So Nazreen, just talk us through some of the projects that you've been working on recently and lately. And what are some of the things that the people in the market are looking for? If someone comes to you or or maybe the past two or three projects that you've been working on, what are the clients looking for? What are the what are the things they constantly Institute as luxury? So um, one of the projects that I was working on, we're almost complete on it, is in Upper Kenilworth. Um, it's six London townhouses, so it's over three stories. Mm. But what we're doing is we're giving people more space because that's what people want. Um, they want the space to enjoy the living areas, they want the space to enjoy the outdoors, the pool, the splash pools in the summer. So that was one of the projects. That was more middle income. Now I am doing, currently I'm doing a luxury uh, project in Upper Claremont, which showcases all the private schools here. I mean, you have the best private schools here for, for girls, boys, co-ed, you know, everything. So um, a 19 on Tool K is a home that, each home is different to the other. So if you walk into one home, you're actually showcasing a beautiful pantry that showcases your dinner, your dinnerware, your mm. champagne glasses, your wine glasses, your, you know, your dinner sets. Um, if you walk into the other room, you have a controlled wine cellar where you can actually enjoy your expensive wines with friends and sample them with a cheese board or even sit down there and have a dinner, you know, a simple dinner with like a really elegant, like romantic dinner. Um, the third one would be, you know, a his and her walk in bathroom as well as closet and let's admit it as women we all want our own closets to showcase <laughs> our gorgeous handbags and our sexy shoes and everything amazing and i see you are there are a lot of men that are becoming more trend conscious in their dressing and want to showcase their designer belts or their designer cufflinks or, or even their designer watches um and even a movie theater in the house mm. so you can enjoy the movie theater as a family or even with friends with the numbers of COVID rising. You want to just have friends over and be normal and experience the normality of life. And 19 on 2K brings you that with a security guard 24 seven round the clock. Mm. So let at legendary investments, what our next one is going to be is showing you um, something different towards 19 on 2K we believe in curating a lifestyle that you can invest in and bringing you all the international standards that you watch on TV or Instagram and you don't have them. 
So something like NFL courts, obviously we don't do NFL. So I would say cricket, like, you know, a simple thing as a small cricket pitch or a soccer pitch or well, tennis courts have been done and dusted for so many years. Mm. Some of the tennis courts are even being dilapidated because mm. no one's using them. So things that people can use to create an atmosphere and a vibe, that is what luxury mm. is for us, is just enjoying being together. You know, as you're talking, I can I can feel the passion. I can legit feel the the luxury passion coming from you. And I want I want us to talk now a little bit about the smaller developments that offer these luxurious um, services and and even um, opportunities for people uh, for younger people for middle class people who to move into lifestyle estates even that provide some of these things that become communal. You know. Um, are you seeing a rise of this happening in terms of um, luxury being broken down into smaller, more affordable um, um, compartments for, for, for the market to say um, this is a luxury apartment, it's a two-bedroom apartment, it's a studio apartment? Um, what is happening in terms of that in the, in the, in the market currently? We're not seeing that in South Africa. Mm. We're not seeing it at all in South Africa. We see it as in maybe a pool in the complex or maybe a gym here and there, yeah. but it would depend on the price tag. Yes. So, no, we're not seeing anything coming up in that sort of markets. And, and when we're talking, when we're talking, um, uh, luxury, right? A lot of people, a lot of myths that, 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 that exist around here is that people, they, they just inflate the prices so that you could get this very same thing um, in a different place, and the price is just uh, inflated. What would you What would you say to nullify this myth and um, to actually just to 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 show that um, this is is more than just a price tag that is attached to to you buying a rug or, or changing something, and it's more of of you increasing value and increasing um, the opulence of this particular property. So. If you're talking about Camp Spec, mm. yes, I would say luxury is expensive there. Yeah. The land price alone, if you look at it, is like really exorbitant. But if you're looking at something as, you know, Ronde Bosch, I'm talking in Cape Town, I'm not sure about the suburbs in Johannesburg. So yeah. um, for me, Houghton would be the most expensive. Uh, suburb. I'm not sure whether there's something more expensive than Houghton in Johannesburg. But if you're looking at Cape Town, Vranderbosch is the more simple, um, you know, middle class suburb that people live in. And there you can add luxury, but the price tag would just be your home is valued at more, not mm. the land. Whereas in Camp Bay, adding luxury also means the price tag of of the land mm -hmm. so there's a correlation between the, the land price and luxury as well as land price and your home mm -hmm. No, definitely. So let's 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 give uh, property investors insight now because we we're really talking in terms of you um, buying and living in this property. With property investors, how, what strategies can they use in order to leverage off this luxury market? What what sort of things should they start looking out for if they haven't done so already? That can help them increase their portfolios, and if they already have um, um, these properties, pivot them to ensure that um, they make more money out of these portfolios. With the luxury market, you can you can never go wrong. So if you've got a swimming pool, conversation pit, a dinner, you know, um, a, a theater, movie theater, actually is what I'm talking about. Um, a conversation pit, uh, a tennis court. These all are things that never goes wrong with the property. And maintaining your property is the most expensive the most important part of it because if you don't maintain your luxury property the rates for your property value uh, decreases it's like a bentley you buy this car you scratch it you know the value decreases mm -hmm. so it's the same with a home and a luxury home 
Sure. Um, and is, is there specific strategies that they can use apart from maintaining it or um, in terms of putting it on the market? Are there specific services that um, your, your organization offers in order for them to be able to, to, to even let these properties out, you know, to increase the investment or to even uh, um, get, get, get the, the property to grow in value, that is? Property always increases. You don't need to do anything to your property. Mm. As long as you maintain it, it always increases. That's yeah. what I found. I mean, <clears throat> I bought a home five years back. And when I sold it, I made a profit out of it simply because I maintained the home. Yeah. And property always increases you can never go wrong whether it's a luxury property or whether it's even a normal property you can never go wrong mm. so in the next coming years 10 to 15 years from now even three um what are we expecting to see in the market what what new trends are coming up are there any technological advancements that um this this particular uh, segment in in the in the industry is now adopting in order to to really grow and to even pivot uh, what are some of those things that um, the, the luxury market is doing to ensure that it grows and it gets more people to to start buying these properties and buy or sell depending on what they would like to do well we're seeing that the more luxury houses have you know they have roller blinds that are you know you touch your phone and simply the roller blinds mm -hmm. you know pick up or drop as you need it to um we're seeing that the lights in the house can be done simply by using your phone we're seeing security um, for that matter, on your phone. And we'd like to take it even a step further. We just need to see what America comes up with or UK comes up with, or even the Chinese, because they're yeah. always technically advanced. Mm -hmm. um, and the UAE, they have the most amazing properties, design, architecture, everything so we just have to watch what the trends are overseas to bring them down to us um and at legendary investments that's what we believe in curating a lifestyle that brings you the international standards that you desire sure I've got some questions that popped up from social media, which I think that we can take just before we close the conversation tonight. Um, Anad Ahmed is asking, does Legendary um, Investment offer these services? I'm guessing he's speaking to the services that you were talking to earlier in terms of uh, your, your architects and your interior designers. So does your organization um, offer these services? We don't offer the architect and the interior decorator, but we do offer building from scratch. All right. Um, thank you so much for that. And then Annie Holds is asking, um, while she's first commented and says, love the different trends and are outdoor theatres becoming more popular in South Africa from, from the trends that you, ha you, you have been seeing over the past couple of years? Well, thank you, Annie. Um, that is something that I want to do in my next development. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm hoping, fingers crossed, <laughs> none of the risks None of the residential developers are out there listening to this podcast. <laughs> but that's something I'd like to try and can stay, hopefully. Yeah. Sure. And, you know, with... with um, uh, with luxury property like this, well, what happens in the case where um, you, for example, have an idea that you know that in the industry, this is how um, you pivot a house, so you get it luxury, and the client is not really inclined. What are some of those things that you guys do? And this is just, by the way, to to, to show them that this is the way um, to go in the in the luxury property market, because I'm sure not everybody who wants to, to improve their homes comes with a ready-made plan, right? No, no one comes with a ready-made plan. It's as you go along, if you find um, that you and the buyer can't agree on things, you've got to find the middle ground where you can find something that she'd want. Um, it may be in another home and you could change it for her so that she could have what she wants at the end of the day because you always want the person that bought the home enjoying the the process of creating this home their dream home i mean for me i was looking for my dream home and i couldn't find it so i believe in creating my own 
dream home. And I want to offer the same thing to people out there who don't have the time to create their own dream home. Mm. No, definitely so. Um, any last words before we wrap up the conversation tonight? Um, not really, but it's been really good talking to you, Tumo, and I hope to get chatting with you again soon. Maybe not about the luxury market, but maybe about <laughs> a different market this time. Yeah, no, definitely. Thank you so much for taking our time to talk to us. I really appreciate it. Have a good night. You too. Thank you so much. Good night. And that is how we get to the end of the conversation tonight where we are talking the evolution of the luxury property market in South Africa and its trends. So you see the trends are going more technological. They're going more technologically advanced, you know, being able to switch on your lights, you know, maybe even start warming your dinner before you get home or maybe even put making sure that as you watch this podcast, you're watching it in a beautiful theater in your home with your friends and family. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and have a beautiful evening. Till the next time we see you, have a good one.